I think about service all the time. Teachers always do. Um, there's something odd about the concept of service where teachers are concerned because if you've got a, do you want fries like that model? Uh, or do you want fries with that model? Um, then uh, the customer is always right. And the problem there is that students can't always be right or everybody would get A's, which would be great for a while and then um, would stop being great once A's didn't mean anything anymore. So we have to have a different picture of what service is than just giving people what they want, or at least what they want most immediately. And then um, I teach mostly introductory world history here, and that's a class that maybe three people out of 25 in the class want to take, and the rest of them are sort of stuck with because it's a requirement for the general education core. And uh, they don't maybe uh, understand why they have to take history. Maybe they've taken it before and gotten very little from it. And so that all has to be worked around. Um, so what is the service that I'm providing? And again, if it's not going to be, do you want fries with that? It has to be something that people can't supply for themselves. They can teach themselves. People learn all the time. They learn from their experience. Uh, so maybe it's an experience that they wouldn't already have gotten by themselves. Maybe they come to college for something that, that wouldn't have happened to them otherwise. So that's the service. There's this German uh, philosopher named Gadamer. He argues that you don't actually learn anything unless you're, you're surprised or your expectations are disappointed. Something that you didn't expect, un unanticipated, has to happen for learning to occur. Otherwise, you're just repeating uh, the familiar situation. So there has to be surprise. It can't be what you thought you wanted, although fries are delicious. Um, so then I, uh, casting around the model of service that, that I have in mind and that I've been talking about recently is cross-training. So if you don't want to take a history class and, and uh, your major is really why you're in college, then uh, what does history actually supply uh, that, that, you wouldn't have, that, uh, that you would want but you wouldn't have realized that you wanted? Uh, flexibility. Um, a different perspective, a different box, a box that's out, outside of your own box. The service is that it's, uh, uh, that it's lateral, that it's a step over from where you were expecting to be and what you cared about. So why do we cross train? Well, you know, I heard this great joke uh, one time. Uh, it was a joke about lifting weights and uh, it was a father talking to his son, I think. And, uh, so the father says, you're going to lift some weights. And the kid says, lift weight? What do you do then? And the, the father says, oh, well, um, you put it down. Well, that's working out. The, it's the stupidest thing in the world. It's something that obviously in itself no one would ever do. You, wouldn't, uh, um, you don't care about the weight. It's not something that you're interested in. You don't want to know where it was made. You don't know, want to know its exact composition. And you certainly don't care, care about picking it up or putting it down again. So why would somebody do that? Well, to become stronger. Why don't they just play the sport that they were playing? Well, because if you just play the sport, you, don't, you actually only develop the muscles that go with that sport. Um, and only in that particular configuration, you've got no flexibility, uh, no strategic reserve, so to speak. So you need to cross train. You go into the gym, you lift weights, you run on a treadmill, another of those incredibly stupid uh, uh, activities where you go nowhere fast for 20 minutes and then, uh, uh, and then you get off and you've sweated a lot. Over time, the idea is that you develop muscles that you wouldn't have developed otherwise and that you'll be more capable across a range of activities and that you'll be able to use your body in a whole series of different ways, not all of which could be anticipated in advance. History works the same way and by extension, all of the, the kinds of education that we serve people with in college work that way. Um, they're not what you thought you wanted because you don't know yet what you, what you actually need. Instead, you're going out into a world where all sorts of stuff is going to happen and uh, you have to be ready to uh, sort of duck and roll and weave and, and, and move and maneuver 
uh, across a whole range of activities. So what I, uh, what I do as a service to people is I offer them a, an unpleasantly rigorous uh, uh, set of exercises um, that they don't care about and that don't interest them. And that's the best thing about it because um, uh, you're going from being able to do only one thing with your body and with your mind to being able to do multiple things with your body and your mind. Uh, and in the long run, the gamble is that that's going to pay off.